Today I'd like to talk to you about this. Enthusiasm and why it's so important. Ralph Waldo Emerson says, enthusiasm is one of the most important, powerful engines of success. When you do a thing, do it with all your might. Put your whole soul into it. Be active, be energetic, be enthusiastic and faithful, and you will accomplish your object. Nothing great was ever achieved without enthusiasm. And I wholeheartedly agree. Enthusiasm has been my most essential tool, aligning all my efforts. In fact, enthusiasm has helped me achieve many different childhood dreams. <laughs> Um, <laughs> including working on 3D animation software at Alias Wavefront, working at Pixar Animation Studios on amazing movies like WALL-E. And now I work at Industrial Light and Magic, or ILM. This is George Lucas's visual effects studio in San Francisco, and yes, it is epic. Um, <laughs> as well as uh, working on uh, Star Wars and uh, Jurassic Park in the past, Recently, we've done movies you've all definitely seen, the Iron Man films, and Transformers. Epic. <laughs> the craziest thing about an image like this is we're so used to seeing something like this, but this is crazy. This is crazy. <laughs> Nothing about that robot is real. It is completely computer generated, and it's amazing. <laughs> it's amazing. Man, um, so in the first minute or so, you've probably noticed my shoes. Um, where are the cameras? Uh, they're, they're blinding the front two rows. I apologize for that. Also, my shirt, if you can't read it, says, I'm really excited to be here, in case it wasn't completely super obvious. Uh, so yeah, in the first couple minutes I've been up here, maybe some words come to mind, some first impressions. Enthusiasm, passion, excitement. Now, um, this is my personality and my clothes. Those kind of things combined, That that's outward obvious stuff. That should be pretty clear. Um, if it's not, it's written on my shirt. Um, and you know, these are, these are very clear things. But today's, today's conference is called Passion, Purpose, and Perspective. So rather than focusing on the obvious stuff, the things that are my, sort of my passion personified, if you will, I'm going to talk about the things under the surface. What drives this enthusiasm? Now, I've taken this sort of ball of energy over the years and applied it towards a purpose or a goal. Now, something I've noticed is that when you do that kind of, that kind of thing, there's this, there's this energy that comes out of achieving one of these goals. Even, even if it's a small goal or a purpose, you get this burst of energy or burst of enthusiasm, confidence that you can roll back into the system. It's kind of like a perpetual energy machine helping to sort of drive you to the next goal, the next goal, the next goal. So I'm going to talk today about three different stories about when I wanted something and how I used my enthusiasm to get it. I hope you find something useful that you can use in your own life. One of the first ways I ever applied my enthusiasm was through persistence. Um, <laughs> I was two years old, we were in Australia, and there was one thing that was more important to me than anything else in the world. The juice box. <laughs> Oh man, these were so good. I could have, if it was up to me, I would have drank these all day and every day. Um, it wasn't up to me, unfortunately. Uh, it was up to my mom. So we'd be, uh, my mom would be wheeling me in the stroller at the mall, and I'd see the escalator, and I knew at the top of the escalator, well, that's where the juice lived. And I said, Mikey want Papa. They're called poppers in Australia for some reason. Mikey want Papa. Sometimes my mom would say yes, and sometimes she would say no. And if she said no, I said, but Mikey want Papa. I want it. I slammed my head against the back of the stroller. <laughs> Crazy kid. But, you know, I knew what I wanted, and I was going to stop at nothing to get it. Now, the year progressed. Uh, I turned three. I learned a new skill. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and my mom was wheeling me. Mikey, you want Papa? No, Mikey, you can't have one every single time. You're so juiced up and crazy already. <laughs> Calm down. <laughs> uh, I thought for a moment. I was like, okay, fair enough. Logical argument. Can I have a peach then? I, I, I found out I could still get a snack. I just had to ask a different way. I, I just had to ask for something else. Um, here's me <laughs> around that age, excited, probably, ah, uh, ex excited probably about the food behind me. <laughs> um, you know, and uh, something my parents always said about me was that I, took, I always took no as the first in a series of possible responses. It was never the final answer, just the first one. 
maybe you had to, <laughs> maybe you had to ask the question differently or ask it of somebody else. Now, I think this is the, de the best definition of the Yiddish word chutzpah, which means audacity. And that is the theme of my second story. So fast forward to grade two. Ah, uh, not as cute there. <laughs> um, I'm riding a, a two-wheeler for the first time. I'd become quite a confident little guy. I'd won the juice war so many times. I'd gotten my way. I was like, I can do it. And my dad's running beside, slow down, you crazy kid. <laughs> Um, and, you know, there's one thing at this age that was also very important to me. Very important. My school was doing a production of the musical Cats, and, uh, like Rob, <laughs> I wanted one of those parts so bad. Uh, it was a part called Bustopher Jones, and I really wanted it. So I said to my teacher, I want the part. Can I have it? I'll do a good job. I promise. Can I have the part? And she said, no. Um, so... <laughs> The, I found out that actually the principal had said no, and I said, well, why? As it turns out, the principal wanted the part to go to grade six because he wanted the student to really understand the meaning of the words. There were a lot of big words in the script. So I thought, okay, fair enough. Logical argument. So here comes the chutzpah. I went home that night. I took the script. I circled the words, all the words I didn't understand. I opened the dictionary. I wrote out the definition in full to every word I didn't understand. Took that sheet home, then, uh, back to school the next day, slammed it on the teacher's desk and said, boom, there you go. <laughs> now I understand the meaning to all the words. Can I have the part now? Chutzpah. <laughs> in uh, Randy Pausch's last lecture, he says, the brick walls are not there to keep us out. They are there to give us a chance to show how badly we want something. This was an opportunity. The crazy thing is, is this actually worked? And uh, <laughs> I, got, I got this part, Buster Jones, it was super fun. This is me with my buddy John, and it was great. I learned two things. One, the rules don't always exist for a good reason. Sometimes you should break them, you really should. The second is that enthusiasm is an amazing tool, amazing. And when you show your enthusiasm and your willingness to work hard, to back it up, people just run to help you. People can't help but run and help you succeed. My third story is about determination. I was 10 years old in South Africa for the first time, visiting some cousins, and I saw the most beautiful thing I've ever seen in my life. It was glorious, <laughs> beautiful, just Unbelievable. Oh my God. It was, I, I couldn't even talk. It was so awesome. This thing was gorgeous. The T1000 robot from Terminator 2. <laughs> oh my God. This thing, this is like a metallic metal robot thing, and he's like, push, and he like melts through this like helicopter and onto the seat and scares the hell out of this guy. And then, uh, oh my God, it was so amazing. I saw this thing, I was like, I have to do computer science. I have to do computer graphics with my life because this is the most awesome thing I've ever seen ever. There will never be anything more awesome than this. And there truly hasn't been ever <laughs> in this world. Um, the cool thing is, is Industrial Light and Magic did these effects. And man, were they good. So that, <laughs> another awkward photo of me as a teenager. <laughs> there are many. <laughs> um, the cool thing is, is that that image gave me a very clear purpose. Very clear. Mike, you have to do special effects for movies. You have to. The cool thing is my passion was for something very useful, the computer. I was always glued to this thing. And right behind the computer on the wall was this poster that said, Dare to be different with the red apple. Just stuck at eye level. My dad put it there. We'll get back to this. So over the years, anyway, I, ha I, was, I was like a mechanic with this thing. My head was in the computer, just parts flying everywhere. CD-ROM drives, tape drive, install this, break that. Fiddle, 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 fiddle. I love doing it. And of course, this was, this was, hard, you know, this was hard work or you know, this, was, this was learning or whatever, but it never, never, never felt like that. You know, I, just, I couldn't imagine doing anything more fun in my spare time. A passion, I guess. <laughs> so um, I continued. Uh, the internet was invented. Of course, you guys have grown up now with it in your pockets, but it was invented. And uh, we had things called modems that made funny noises. And, um, Anyway, the internet was invented, and, and I uh, helped uh, some friends at school make the first uh, elementary school website in our area. 
Then the reporter came to my house and did a full page color, color article on me in the newspaper about making my own web page. <laughs> now, this is, this is ridiculous, right? Like, in hindsight, it may as well say, local boy makes website. You know, it's, it doesn't seem that crazy, but the internet was brand new, nobody knew anything about it, and it was really exciting. So, uh, yeah, it was fun. But the cool thing, what this meant to me was this was one of, those, one of those encouraging little wins. And I thought, you know what, this is, I, I'm kind of onto something here. I should just keep going, keep going. This is really encouraging. And so I did. I uh, started a business in grade eight, first called uh, Computer Kid, then Computer Solutions, a nice 3D logo. <laughs> and um, I started to realize that somehow over the years, I'd become just really good at computer troubleshooting. I'd broken my, well, my dad's computer so many times that I'd, I'd, I'd just kind of magically become really good at problem solving. The craziest thing, though, was that parents, teachers, friends, neighbors, whatever, wanted to give me money <laughs> to do the thing that I would have been doing for free, at home, on my own, in my own spare time anyway. That's pretty motivating. So fast forward a little bit to grade 10, and I did this fantastic research assignment in a, in a school class, and I, I really suggest anyone around this age try it. We had to research our dream job, and we had to find out all the practical details about how to achieve it. So what degree you needed, what school, that kind of thing. For me, it became very clear very quickly to be a software engineer at ILM, you needed a degree in computer science. I decided at that point that the place where I wanted to get that was the University of Waterloo. It's a very prestigious school, one of the best schools in the country for computer science. Very hard to, woo, <laughs> got some Waterloo, Waterloo peeps in the house. <laughs> anyway, I wanted to go there super bad, and so I worked really, really hard. And I got in, and when I got there, I worked really, 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 really hard. It's a lot of work. Um, and now I'm no T-1000 robot, I'm not a machine, I get tired, I get stressed out just like anyone else. But I had a secret, I had a little trick. My dad gave me the Dare to be Different poster and I stuck it on the wall, the one with the red apple, stuck it on the wall at eye level behind my desk. I also took a little printout uh, from Pixar Animation Studios, uh, Monsters Incorporated, my favorite movie, stuck that on the wall at eye level. So at three in the morning on one of those crazy long nights, I was trying to you know, solve some calculus problem, couldn't figure it out. Uh, I could lean back and my purpose was staring me right blank in the face, Mike, this is why you're working so hard. Don't stop, keep going, you can do it. This is what all the hard work is for. It's a good little trick. Anyway, I had the absurd fortune of actually working at Pixar Animation Studios during my school career. And uh, it was, this was crazy, like, this is crazy. In this shot here from Wally, -E, um, you can see a bunch of my artwork there on the shelves. Um, this is in Wally's -E home and his, in his truck. And, you know, this is crazy. I was really, I was living my dream and I hadn't even graduated from university yet. It's crazy. So fast forward a few years, uh, you know, getting closer to graduation and I applied to Pixar for a full-time job. Now, it just so happened that the exact same time I applied was the same time that Disney and Pixar were merging. Now, this is a great move forward for the company, but what it meant for me was there were just no jobs available at the time when I wanted one. Bad timing, bad luck. What do you do? I think it's very, very easy to be passionate, excited, enthusiastic when things are going well. What do you do when something doesn't quite go as planned? What's your perspective? If you see what I did there? <laughs> What's your perspective, if you will? So I learned something very useful from Edna, from the, a character from The Incredibles, and she says, <laughs> take your inspiration from anywhere. <laughs> She says, luck favors the prepared, darling. But I, can't, I can't do that voice. <laughs> luck favors the prepared. Several years earlier, I'd met uh, this guy named Josh, a, um, an ILM recruiter at this computer graphics conference. And I said to him, I told him my Terminator story. I said, you guys did the most awesome thing I've ever seen in my life, ever. This thing, and he walks out of the flaming building. It's like, doo -doo -doo -doo. it was so awesome. Man, and you guys did this. I devoted my life to computer science, to computer graphics, because of this. And he said, thank you very much. <laughs> and, you know, fast back to the future again. I'm, I'm, I'm at school, and, you know, I just learned about Pixar. I wasn't really sure, you know, where to go next. 
what I was going to do, and I got this email. It turns out to be from the same recruiter from a few years before, and he said he'd remembered my enthusiasm, and he'd made special note to email me a couple months before I was going to graduate. Crazy. <laughs> I paused for a moment, and I was like, wait a minute. <laughs> what is this? I very quickly realized this was the exact message I'd been working towards for 15 years. So calmly, <laughs> I sat down, I opened the email, and it said, Dear Mike, have you, have you ever thought about working for Industrial Light and Magic? <laughs> Once I peeled myself off the ceiling <laughs> and stopped running around the house, I, I s calmed down, I sat down, I clicked reply, and I said, yes, only since I was 10 years old. Now, I've spoken today a lot about taking your enthusiasm and applying it towards a purpose, how important enthusiasm is. I want to close now on one of the most important purposes in life that I think you can drive towards, and that is happiness. Another poster that's always been stuck on the wall behind my computer at eye level was uh, Max Ehrman's Desiderata. In this poem, the final line says, strive to be happy. Now, I love this phrase, strive to be happy. I love the word strive. Man, it makes it sound so hard. It makes it sound like happiness is a purpose. Happiness is something you have to want. Happiness is something you have to go out and get. You have to be passionate about trying to be happy. You really have to want it. That's really cool. I like that idea. Now, I leave you today, dear audience, with a challenge. Despite everything in life, be super enthusiastic. Be enthusiastic. <laughs> it is so important. It's so easy to be jaded, to fall victim to someone else's cynicism, to be complacent in this world. It is absolutely hard, despite everything, to be enthusiastic. But if you can do it, you will stick out like a sore thumb, or in this case, the red apple. Dare to be different. Now, next time you find yourself just about anywhere, you know, in math class, hanging out with a guy or a girl you like, you know, hanging out with your parents, next time you find yourself just about anywhere, think, you know what? Life is good, and I'm really excited to be here. Thank you very much. Thank you. Woo. Thank you very much.